Hello and welcome to The Hearing, our music review show here on the channel. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, um, you, you well, I, I responded to your comments about Handlebars <laughs> last week during our Flowbots review. Um, any uh, rebuttal? Well, I, I, they were claiming that it was all of humanity, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. However, he's using the same childlike voice throughout, which kind of, which more than kind of, it does. That's why people would think that it's the I, same. I person. can definitely understand why you would think that without <laughs> really digging into the lyrics, you know. And the whole thing is about you know the kid not being able being able to ride the bike without handlebars. Well, you that's know, just with, the hook at the beginning and at the end. But he also says, "I can split the atom. I can." Well, you know. Sure, sure. The, but the song mm -hmm. is called "Handlebars." Well, yeah. They're using that for a reason, though. That that, it, and it does point to like this. Um, this issue of self-confidence mm -hmm. and the ability to maybe break the rules. Well, it's about in, in that little uh, blurb I read, um, Jamie Laurie said it's, it's about humanity's ability to both create and destroy. Right. Um, and, and you really need to break the lyrics down to realize there's no way that one person could have done all of those things that he says I can do. Well, right. Uh, and <laughs> that, that, that is, that that's kind of what makes it unrealistic, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah, because Jonas Salk isn't going to run for president, right? But somebody who's you know failed at business say, <laughs> might. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the same person is probably not going to split the atom or or make an antibiotic or. Well, right, know. exactly. So you know, and, and the way they had used the same voice, it mm -hmm. would be different if he changed the childishness to the voice, maybe. Uh, uh, you know. Or had somebody well, it's more in the word singing in a different yeah. voice, you know, yeah. or or did did something to point that out that yeah. it's different people. And, and, and Appleine mentioned that. Um, she, uh, by the way, thank uh, thanks again to Appleine. She did an amazing job last week. Um, but she mentioned that the, I can put anybody in jail just because I don't like them. Sounded very childlike, right? Even though, frankly, that's what happens. Yeah, and so you you still see that same child who. Mm -hmm you know, can ride his bike without handlebars. <laughs> so it's an understandable confusion, but, you know, it, there, it, it isn't really the same person. Right. It's one that they created, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to this week's album, which is from 2012, Oh You Sinners by Eliza Rickman. Actually, one last thing about um, uh, Flowbots. I don't, you guys, I don't think you guys mentioned Faith No More during that. We talk about a lot of the bands that they kind of sounded like um because there are a few they they well they're in that rap rock vein which comes well, from true. and maybe the chili peppers and some stuff around that same time in the late 80s but um, a lot of like their sound i would put it's if you wanted to like just take two bands to describe what who what they sound like i would say they are faith no more meets cake interesting yeah i can say it yeah especially because... with all the trumpet Right, they they take a bit of more jazzier approach mm -hmm. to the rap rock. Yeah, I mean politically, they're a lot like Rage. Yeah, yeah. And I, I believe was asking about American censorship, and American censorship has always been really weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, that I mean, we had like MC Five back in the '60s. I mean, we had a lot of war protest songs. Um, mm -hmm. even if you remember the lyrics to "Give Peace a Chance." I mean, he's using the other F word in there. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, you know, some intense shit. Right, but yeah. no, they had, like, for radio, it was the seven dirty words. Right. Um, I think there was you know, blatant sexual con content, although mm -hmm. uh, Billy yeah. Joel had masturbate in his song. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jack. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then if we went to TV they were really weird about stuff with TV. They were much more stricter, actually. Because mm -hmm. remember, like, the doors, they right, didn't yeah, yeah. want him to say couldn't get much higher. Right, because it was a drug reference. And as far as the seven dirty words, they've only been lifted very recently. That's why you had the South Park shit episode, because they well, could finally do it. They determined that basic cable isn't... The rules of the FCC right. don't yeah, apply yeah. to basic cable. So you, you have them saying shit on many different shows now in basic cable and mm -hmm. it's no big deal anymore. Yeah. 
And just one quick note about Billy Joel, um, not just masturbate, men the mention of masturbation in Captain Jack, but check out Just a Fantasy. It's about Oh, fun. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they were a lot less on the nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. True, true. <laughs> that, <laughs> so that, that's, euphemistic. that's a brief history of American censorship. Thank anyway, you very much, <laughs> finally, <laughs> Professor <again>. Scotto. <laughs> on to this week's album, which is, again, from 2012, OU Centers by Eliza Rickman. Eliza Rickman is an American singer-songwriter um, indie singer-songwriter and pianist from L.A. She's best known for her use of unconventional instruments such as the toy piano and her vintage Victorian-era dresses, as well as her collaborations with the podcast Welcome to Night Vale and musician Jason Mumbley. Due to her aesthetics both in fashion and musically, uh, Rickman is regarded as being hard to classify. She doesn't feel that singer-songwriter really fits her. A term she prefers is post-Prince Charming or the Disney princess who's been, who's been through some shit. <laughs> Um, for example, her song Pretty Little Head has been described as disconcerting, borderline childlike, subliminal <laughs> peculiarity, peculiarity, and the feel of a nursery rhyme that's starting to teeter off the rails. I think that can describe most of her music. Hmm. Um, OU Sinners was uh, her second album, uh, her second release, I should say, her first full album, funded via Kickstarter and produced by Mark Greenberg and Eliza Rickman. According to Rickman, when she began working on the album, she went through her favorite CDs, made a list of the engineers and producers, and began contacting them. Huh. Um, since Andrew Bird is among her favorite, one, or, one of her favorite recording artists, um, she, her, his engineer, Mark Greenberg, was at the top of her list, and Greenberg expressed interest in working with her, so here we have it. Um, couldn't find um, musicians who worked on the album, but there's a long list of uh, her regulars on Wikipedia. I have it in my notes, but it's too long to really get into now. And fun fact, this album was recorded two miles down the road from my for, from this location. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, right down Lawrence Avenue. I'm in Albany Park, north side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was at a place called Mayfair Studios. Mayfair and North Mayfair are two neighborhoods that are just west of me. Okay. And uh, this is actually the studios in North Mayfair on mm -hmm. Elston. And now on to the tracks. Of course, I don't put any of the music into the video for copyright reasons. But down in the description, you'll find a link to the album on Bandcamp, this time instead of Spotify. Whenever an album is on Bandcamp, I'm going to use it because they allow you to listen to the full album for free um, as well as buy it. And they give a larger cut to the artist than, oh, do they? Okay. Yeah, than Amazon or iTunes or, or Google. Um, it's, it's used by a lot of independent artists. Um, I love the site. I've, I've, anytime an, I, I have the option to buy there, I do. They also let you buy um, uncompressed for or for lossless for the same price. They don't charge you more for them. All right. Oh, yeah, it's good to know because yeah. I mean I haven't Highly bought music that. in a long time, but uh, that, that's where I would go then. Yeah, I absolutely recommend them if, if you're looking for something on there or just browse, see what you like. All right, on to track one, Black Rose. I love the simplicity of the song, most of her arrangements, uh, but especially this song. It's, it's just a toy piano march. It's just toy <laughs> piano and some very subtle but very driving percussion, and that's it, and vocals, and that's it. Right, it's a march, but it's on toy piano. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's a great nod to Dylan in the first verse. She actually says yes. it in the way. Uh -huh. And normally you'd think a toy piano would sound out of place. It normally kind of annoys me, frankly. But it fits her music perfectly. Yeah, I mean, I like it here. It's it's It really grabs your attention. It's the perfect intro. Mm. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't really go many places in this you just have that <laughs> and, and, even in and the, the toy piano even in the instrumental section it's exactly what would have been behind the vocals yeah but i kind of like that it just has that drive to it that it's just that insistence even in fact the percussion seems to be getting louder as the song progresses well right right it's it's that progressive march it's... and the vocals take it some interesting have an interesting progression it starts off with just a solo vocal and then some ooze and ahs come in in the second verse. And then the last verse is completely harmonized. The whole song just gets bigger and bigger with this sort of r repetitive piano. And, her and really, lyrics, the vocals are really what, what you're, you're, you're yeah, buying the ticket yeah, for, more than anything else. Um, I have this note on the second song, but I'll say it now. Uh, I yeah. love Eliza Rickman's voice. Yeah. She's clearly very trained. Mm -hmm. But she's also very emotive and kind of raw. She has kind of a yodely quality to her voice. Yeah. It's this great balance. She has a lot of uh, different 
you know, tricks up their <laughs> sleeve, you know? <laughs> yeah, she um, has a full arsenal with the voice. Yeah. Um, the way I described her to you a couple weeks ago was um, Kate Bush, if she'd been from, if she was from New Orleans. And and Eliza Rickman isn't from New Orleans. Uh, she was born in Japan. Her father was in the military. Um, and the next thing I know she is that she went to college in L.A. There's no real nothing about the intervening years. Um, but she has that sort of rootsy off kilter sound that you kind of get from a lot of New Orleans artists. But of a strong Kate Bush influence, of course. And her lyrics are interesting. And this is a case where I am going to periodically comment on the lyrics. I don't do that often, <laughs> as evidenced by last week. <laughs> um, but they're very abstract in a lot of cases. Yeah, there were some where, yeah, I had to to go. Normally, I don't go for a lyric, you know, like try to read lyrics. I try yeah, to. I sent you the Bandcamp link specifically so you could see the lyrics. <laughs> you know, try to let the album just wash over me until, mm -hmm. you know, unless there's something I need clarification on, right. I'll dig for lyrics. On to track two, uh, Devil's, Front, Devil's Flesh and Bones. This almost kind of feels like it would fit an old French film. It's not quite a tango, but it has this a similar vibe to it. Now, the intro, you know, you get this you know, very Tori Amos feel to it. Yeah. Tori Amos is another, is another one she's very reminiscent of. Good call. And, and you know, I'm kind of like, oh, she's not just going to, you know, do this Tori Amos. And then the song then goes into this more, you know, jazzier you you know, branch great, off. You get this great pizzicato violin. And this rattle sound on the right side that sounds kind of like a vibra slap, but right. not exactly. And and then in the third verse, there are these descending atonal violins. Like it just goes complete again, like off the rails, like that description of pretty little headset. And the drums again seem to be getting louder. They're more noticeable at the end. On to track three, the first one with really straightforward lyrics um, over cold shoulder. Just really a straight country song, or maybe just mountain music would be the right. There's very, it. is a very, you know, you can see there's a Dolly Parton influence here, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and her voice is very comparable to Dolly Parton, mm -hmm. which is, of course, great company. I don't think I'm into waltzes though that much. <laughs> well, this this is on the cold shoulder. It's it's more of a straight, you know, country song. Um, love the violin. It kind of sounds like a saw. It's very high, and there's some interesting sort of tapping percussion, but. Again, this is really the first time I'm going to comment specifically on the lyrics um, because I got them. I didn't understand them in the first two. <laughs> I had no. I have Black Rose and and Devil Sucks and Bone. I have no idea what they're about. Um, this is very clearly about a distant and possibly abusive father. Oh, um, she talks about you know um, the soot's falling to the ground the moment you come into town, and um, there's specific mention of a father and you know what his children have become. Huh. All right. Um, I have no idea if it's autobiographical or not, or if she was, she was, you know, from the perspective of a character. But at least that was my interpretation, and and the best I can do with any of these lyrics is interpret them. You know, I say it's straightforward. It's really just the most straightforward, in my opinion. On to through an aquarium, track four. This is my favorite. I was just gonna say, you know, leading up to this, I was kind of like, all right, you know, this is, you know, this isn't bad. This is good, you know. Mm -hmm. It, but when this one, I was like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> this is more like it. <laughs> it starts with this repeating line on either a toy piano or a dulcimer. I can't be sure. It's just, it's very unsettling and it just drones throughout the it whole song. Reminds me a lot of like the theme from Psycho, not, not the shower part, right, but right. that stressful intro yes, in the beginning yes. where you're just like, ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Only and, it's slower. <laughs> and the whole verses just have this really unsettling, cold, off-kilter tonality to them. Um, I think it's a harmonic minor. I've worked out the melody a little bit. Um, and it, the opening line, I love. The first line of the song, good luck said the nightmare. <laughs> love that line. And then the chorus is a great contrast to the, the course is completely different reminds me of a band called stream of passion who we might uh, review at some point but sure there's, we will. there's symphonic metal yeah and and their singer um, um marcelo bovio has a similar tendency toward the the kind of very up uh, anthemic kind of big melody on the chorus because it gets very big and very anthemic um, right with and the line just, you better run away it takes you away from from that that creepy piano <laughs> 
<laughs> and you're just kind of flying. And I almost would have wished that it would have branched off when it came back to the verse at the end. But I guess, you know. It, it, does, come, it does come back to that sort of cold, unsettling verse. I should mention right. the first verse with uh, Good Luck at the Nightmare is repeated. Right, and maybe that's the point, you know, and maybe that's just not something she does, you know, maybe, you know, but maybe, yeah, the point of this is it you don't get away. <laughs> and then she comes back to the for the second verse to that same thing. And then in the bridge, it's stripped down again. It's just piano, vox, and vo- vocals and, and violins. And it, it's just, it's mostly just off kilter and unsettling, except for that big anthemic chorus. Yeah. So, yeah, just a wonderful song. Track five, Cinnamon Bone. Another case of very um, straightforward lyrics. Um, so when I had to dig for the, I had to go to the lyrics, like, just yes. to see, because I mean, she's throwing all these other images out there for uh-huh. this. So it's like, wait, what? what's going on here? Well, the first line, crawling flat on broken glass. Yes. Is. Yes. You know, in the chorus, put a name on the wall and waste some time on me. The only thing I don't understand is the lines, is the phrase Cinnamon Bone. I'm not sure how that fits in, but it's all about you know chasing someone who doesn't really give a shit about you and who isn't right. good for you. Right. Not and then quite finally, enough. and then little by little coming to your senses. And so we see the toy piano back in this one. Yeah, just toy piano and Vox again vocals. Um, I have Vox in my notes because it's faster, right? Right. Um, not not without the yeah you know, without the march though this time. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just piano and vocal. Yeah. Um, and there's some great counterpoint vocals in the second verse. I want to. I tend to. I, I'm tempted to say harmony, but it's different enough to be a counterpoint. Um, it, it's just a, a perfect example of her very sparse, simple arrangements that are just lyrically fascinating and and you know, musically just beautifully off kilter, kind of Danny Elfman, but not as dramatic and and kind of overwrought as Danny Elfman stuff. Well, it sounds I, something like the Simpsons theme. I suspect Elfman is probably also an influence on her. Um, on to track six, another more conventional one, um, OU Sinners. Now, you said an earlier one had more of a tango feel, but I feel this one definitely has that whole Interesting. tango feel to it. More like a slowed down Ronette's, you know, be my little baby. <laughs> hmm. Kind of, yeah. It's, it's, it's a similar um, rhythm to it. Um, it's just, it's, again, piano and vocals. And I think there's a bass and some percussion on this one. Yeah, It's a lot more fleshed out than you know, a lot of her work. Um, right. More of great uh, high saw-like violins that just kind of cut through this more you know lush song. And the lyrics are interesting because I, I, I'm not really sure what it's about. But it's titled OU Sinners. Uh, yeah. It talks about sinners and saints. And the opening line is, see you, seek you, see through. And there are some allusions to religion. And I'm wondering if this is about losing your faith. It kind of has that feel to it. That's, you know, I, get, I get that sense, again, you know, screaming atheist here. Um, <laughs> but I have, again, it's, it's another case. There are very few cases where the lyrics are straightforward. Um, Cinnamon Bone, I think, is really the only obvious one that, that yeah. she wrote. Um, on to probably her most famous song because it was in an episode of Welcome to Night Vale, Pretty Little Head. Um, this is the first song I heard in the first Welcome to Night Vale episode I ever heard. So as I was falling in love with the podcast, if you haven't heard Welcome to Night Vale, please check it out. Um, I was falling in love with this song at the same time. Um, and I think I loved it so much because of Night Vale, because I went to check out her other music and it honestly, as much as I enjoy it now, it took a while to grow on me. I can only make it through so much of Night Vale. Well, because normally when I'm listening to things, I'm, I'm like working, so I can't really give Night uh-huh. Vale the entire attention that it deserves. Because uh-huh. if you miss like a little bit of Night Vale, you're just like, wait, what the fuck is going well, on? That's kind of the point of Night Vale. I, yeah. you, you jump in the middle and it makes no sense. If you go back to the very beginning and work your way through, there is a, there is a, a through line. But anyway, oh, there are several through lines, but on to back to the song. So um, without having that context, this song stands well on its own, oh, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. I mean, it, it is definitely one of the, the brighter points of the album without well, yeah. hands but down. My, I think my, my point was that it, it, I, I, it didn't throw me like a lot of her other music did at first and have to grow on me as much because I had that you know introduction to it through this other thing that I had fallen in love with. 
Um, of course, over time, I you know love her music now. Um, she recently did a music video for this one. Yeah. It'll be out at the end of this month or the beginning of next month. It was going to be out last week. But wow. She, she decided to hire a, a PR firm to really give it a big push. This she is from like six years ago, though? 2002, but it's her most popular song. Wait, this is from 16 years ago? Six, no, six years ago. Okay, six um, 2012, <laughs> or 2012, sorry. Um, you know what year it is, right, man? <laughs> 2012 it came out. Um, it's her most popular song because of Night Bell. Yeah. And so she finally did a video for it, um, backed it on, you know, support, you know, funded it on Kickstarter. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I've seen it because I was a Kickstarter backer. I'm not going to say much about it, but it is hilarious and gory and very inventive. Um, but you know, back to the song, of course. Um, yeah. but, but real quick, she does amazing videos. I'm also going to put a, her, a link to her YouTube channel in the description. Um, really inventive and weird and off kilter and awesome. Um, I love the harmonized violins. There's two pizzicato violins that together, two or three, that form a, a chord individually. It's um, D minor to F. I can play it on ukulele, actually. Oh, um, yeah. And there's some great percussion, just a very creative use of a trap kit because they don't play a straight beat. It's just kind of hits hits these accents. And, and I mean, I, I like the the complicated you know melody and everything but really i think the best part is just the the outro without the music yeah yeah and, and the more i thought of it the more i was like she should do more uh she should do more on because well, she just we'll has to, such a great yes. voice but before we get to that the bridge um but another comment about the lyrics i so relate to the bridge uh, yeah. Take a breath, my heart, and hold your tongue. It's just a cog in the ear of all my love. <laughs> I've lived that so many times. Um, and and the end of the bridge, where it's she just sings all my love repeatedly, gets very dramatic. The violins go up high, with you know bowed violins up high, very loud. And the end of the song, it's completely a cappella. And I would love to know if she had an instrument in her earphones when she sang that or not, huh. because she's perfect. Like she could have had some violins or something in her ears, you know, that, that weren't on the track just to keep her in key. And I, I would love to know whether or not she did because it's perfect. Right. And it's very and, difficult to say that on key without something keeping you there. It, it, tough to say, but I mean, the, some like seeing that though, or just demonstrating that, I was just kind of like, you know, I think sometimes the music actually gets in the way of her, her voice coming through mm -hmm. and just, uh, just having that outro was just, it was the first yeah. taste you get of this in right. the album. And you're just, Whoa. <laughs> and I think that's why I like the more sparse arrangements because Definitely. it does give her voice more room. You know, a uh, pretty little head's probably the most um, heavily arranged song on the album. Yeah. On to track eight, start with goodbye, stop with hello. Again, it's voice and play piano only. Um, she sounds very country on this one. Yeah, this is probably my least favorite on the album. And largely because it's the the third the third code back. I think as I my notes say, I think I may have found the answer to how many songs with toy piano are too many. <laughs> <laughs> one, it's an odd accent. Two, yeah. it's an interesting callback. Three might be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, honestly this isn't one i listen to much uh, i do love the descending uh harmonized chorus on you know home love and then we say in the core in in the course of the song um well but that's it's it's yeah i don't really have much else to say about this one i feel the toy piano is definitely a distraction here on this one it, it they were it worked with the other two but this one i feel you're kind of like wait why is this back what is she doing <laughs> you know? that's this is the last one she uses it on well right right um <laughs> the melody seems a little too familiar too i mean maybe it's just not in my wheelhouse but yeah. i could have you know i can't put my finger on where i've heard it before but i you know it just it all didn't work for me in this one <laughs> on to track nine white words probably the most interesting song on the album this is my favorite off the whole album actually because it is just vocals and i think a triangle toward the end yeah. I've, i listened to that little bit of that chime several times i think it's a triangle it reminds me a lot of saint vincent yes yeah, it does. I yeah, think there, it was probably a big influence on this there's song. There's a number of St. Vincent, you know, 
Okay, you hear a lot more St. Vincent than just on this song. Yeah, there are there are the points, but it's not like she's it's not like she's not ripping her off, from no. her. But there there's a you can see there's a kinship there. Mm-hmm. And this one, um I I don't know about this one being St. Vincent as hear? much. This scene, but with the, the more of the background vocals. You maybe oh yeah, yeah, Sounds you're right. Like very you're much right. something like something St. Vincent would do. Like that that I, I call it a sampled uh, backing vocal, but I don't mm-hmm. think it was actually sampled. It was just probably sung through a modulator yeah, no. of some sort. But uh, oh, this, I don't think this was harmonized. There was no electronics on the vocals other than recording them. She oh, really? All, I think that she just sang all of it. But that backing vocal, it's definitely ran through something, you know? It's well, she, but it's harmonized. She sang, you know, the same part multiple times in different on different notes. But I think it's just her voice. Honestly, and it's Pretty, very repetitive, but I kind of like it. Well, right, yeah, it it works. So, uh, you know, of all the things that we've done, at, where I haven't heard before, this is probably the closest I've I've come to throwing something on my starred list nice. to listen to later on on my Spotify. Mm-hmm. My giant star list that goes for probably like a week. <laughs> <laughs> and and the background vocals they start with this just very simple rhythmic thing. And then they build throughout the song to get more and more complicated. And not a lot of singers can pull that off. You know? Right. And yeah, this is definitely, if there's one song you have to hear off this one, I would say this one's it. Mm. It's just, it has that, it's so just weird too, but it's minimalist at the same yeah, time. Very minimalist. And, and yeah, it's going to be, it's one of those that when other people hear it, they're like, wait, wait, what is this? <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah. <laughs> On to track 10, Coming Up Roses. This one starts with what sounds like a train. I, I was there an odd sound effect at the beginning. Yeah. And then a harmonium, at least I think it's a harmonium, which is a, also known as a pump organ. It's just a very odd sound. It's also the only song where I noticed a bass. I know there's oh. bass on a couple other songs, yeah. but specifically, but it's the only one where it really stuck out to me. I can't tell if it's an upright or a bass guitar. Um, a doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what the high pitched instruments um, between the verses are. I think maybe affected tr- tr- yeah, chimes with an effect on them. Just musically, very interesting. Um, the lyrics didn't really strike me. Yeah, this this one. I mean. I'd probably have to go back to other mm-hmm. listenings to like yeah, the get... harmonium and the kind of weird instrument instruments between the verses. Um, sorry about taking my mic. Are, are really what struck me. On to track eleven, the only cover on the album. A cover, uh, yeah. Into my arms, uh, a Nick Cave cover. I hadn't heard the original until today, honestly. I haven't heard a lot in the cave, but this is one of the few songs I have heard. Yeah, um, yeah, I've heard yeah you know, here and there. I've mm-hmm. probably you. Know, I probably have heard this before, but just it didn't jump out at me when he yeah. did it. Honestly, it's a s- similar arrangement, just voice and piano. Um, well, no, no, no. the the difference is her voice about two octaves. <laughs> yeah, has this beauty to it, and of course, Nick Cave is Nick Cave. That's his yeah. thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and not a lot of artists can pull off a Nick Cave cover because right. he's such a specific artist, but she pulls it off. I think. Next, I'd like to hear try some Tom Waits. <laughs> yeah. And again, no. not a lot of people can do Tom Waits. Oh, no. <laughs> because she's so far afield from both of them. Yeah. She's sort of, the, she's almost the polar opposite. And I think that's why it works. Exactly. Because the, again, the arrangement is similar. It's just a piano. She could have very well done a co- taken a karaoke version of that song and just sung over it, but <laughs> it works because her voice is so different, and it's it's very atmospheric. Uh, I think there there probably are some effects on this one, you know, that aren't really obvious. All right, so would you recommend the album? I would. I, I you know I need to go back and listen to some of the other tracks that didn't jump out at me right away, mm-hmm. like that. You know, on the first couple of listens yeah. I've had of it, and I think this is an album, and I think her music in general. You know, I had to listen to a lot of it before it really spoke to me, and I would definitely recommend this. Recommend multiple listenings on this album her, because her there voice are is little worth the price of admission, though. You know, yeah, there are little bits that you don't really catch the first time. The ones that really jumped out at me, uh, you know, the first time, of course, um, Pretty Little Head and Through an Aquarium and White Words, you know. The, the 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 real obvious you know unusual ones but the other songs 
there are bits and pieces that are very subtle that you really don't catch until you've heard it a number of times. Yeah. All right, that's it for OU Sinners by Eliezer Rickman. Until next time, when we'll be reviewing Tyranny of Distance by Ted Leo and the Pharmacists. Wow, we're doing Ted Leo. And that is the one you wanted to do, right? Because I know there was a question about that at one point. Oh, there's so many good Ted Leo. I, you know what? I really... <sighs> we'll be doing something by Ted Leo. We'll decide in the interim. <laughs> It will definitely be a Ted Leo. Guys asked last week week about people doing political political musicians. Mm -hmm. Ted Leo is definitely (laughs) kind of the godfather of political musicians Ah, from the two thousands and and up. Until then, of course, you'll find OU Sinners on Bandcamp and down in the description, and a link to her YouTube channel, as well as all of our links, social media links to subscribe to the audio versions of this show and Zombie Takeout on RSS and iTunes, uh, our blog, johnandscotto.com, which I never mentioned, but you can find all of it there, uh, all of the episodes in audio and video, and our email address, and, there are, and our album list. I never mentioned this, but our album there's a link to our album list. You can see everything we're planning to review. Um, you if you've got thing. <laughs> Things are out there. <laughs> yeah, and if you've got suggestions, please let us know. Because there is a lot of overlap in our tastes. Yeah. And if we're not really going to end up surprising each other a lot of, uh, too nah. much. So it would be great to have other influences, especially genres that we don't listen to. If you've got a country album or an EDM album or something that, you know, that's really out of our wheelhouse, that would be great. I, I, there's a lot that falls to both of our wheelhouses, though, we honestly. We cover a lot of genres, yeah. but there are some that neither of us like country. Neither of us really listens to country. Neither yeah. of us really listens to dance music. You know, and it would be interesting to look at some of that stuff. And I'm sure there's some obscure, you know, uh, genre that we don't know about. Hell, if you want to recommend a Tuvan throat singing album, go for it. (laughs) That's kind of my go-to for weird. Okay. (laughs) Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there There you are. There you are.